the moments where I really struggle and I fail at something, I'm reminded of the perspective that the night sky brings us, of how small we are and how much there is to learn. And that ignites this excitement and curiosity in me to keep going. Hey everyone, I'm Brittany Jones Cooper and welcome to Unmuted. Serafina Nance is an astrophysicist preparing to train like an astronaut in a Mars simulation and she joins us to share the importance of STEM for girls and how she's prepping for the opportunity of a lifetime. I want to start at the beginning. When did you first get into space and the stars? I fell in love with the stars when I was like four years old. One of the things that I think really got me interested in pursuing this as a research career is that we only know 4% of all matter and energy in the universe. Everything else, 96% we don't know what it is. And so that to me is so exciting as someone who's curious and likes exploring. There's just so much to be learned about our universe. Serafina, I know you're Egyptian. I'm curious, what has your experience been like as a woman and a woman of color pursuing a career in STEM? It's been challenging, I'm not gonna lie. There are messages that people give young students, particularly women and particularly women of color, from a very early age that maybe they're not smart enough to do math and science. I remember a teacher telling me, you know, girls just aren't cut out for this. And those explicit and implicit messages really shape a young student's perspective of themselves and whether they belong in the field. My hope is to continue to be that sort of support and elevate other people's voices who are similarly struggling and feel like they don't belong. Well, that's why it's so important and powerful to have someone like you out there leading in STEM. So tell me about the High Seas program because it sounds so cool. It's this habitat on Mauna Loa in Hawaii. There are missions for as short as two weeks and as long as full years. My crew is six people and we basically live like we're on Mars. That includes wearing spacesuits every time we leave the habitat, having limited food and water. We have a time delay between all communications. That's 20 minutes, just like we were on Mars. So it's really trying to simulate as much of living on Mars as possible to prepare astronauts in the future to go to Mars. It sounds like such a physical obstacle, and I know that it's coming after your own personal health journey. Yeah, my dad was diagnosed with metastatic prostate cancer. We both got genetic testing and came back positive for the BRCA2 genetic mutation, which gives me an 87% lifetime risk of breast cancer and 30% risk of ovarian cancer, as well as some other cancers. I speak openly about having anxiety. It's an incredibly anxiety-inducing diagnosis to know you are that likely to get cancer. I got my preventive double mastectomy to decrease my risk from 80 to less than 5%. I had three surgeries in one year to be able to be proactive about my health and make decisions to save my own life. It was, I think, maybe the best decision I've ever made. I feel really, really lucky to have this opportunity to be able to pursue my dreams, especially after something that made me uncertain whether I would ever be able to do something like this. Now my goal is to just keep honing my skills and my hope is that they can keep propelling me on this path to hopefully be able to go to space one day. Well, I'm excited to watch your journey and I can't wait to see you in space one day. Thank you, fingers crossed. <laughs>